everyone, this is Caitlin. And this is Lacey. And Silas. And this is Women in the Trailer Industry. Today we're going to talk a little bit about struggles with trainings, things we've experienced in um, our company with training, and just kind of what that looks like for us. Lacey, you had the most recent experience with this. What are your thoughts? Um, it was kind of chaotic at first, uh, especially because I had a kind of a crazy week where I was training multiple people in different departments. So when you um, have that go on, it's really, you should really take the time to prepare um, and then schedule it out, I feel like, because that's what I didn't do right at first was to schedule it out like, okay, um, if you have them coming in the same week, maybe come in different days because there's no way you can do it all in one day. And yeah. you can only have so much material that they need to be going over without your assistance. There's, sorry. It's so um, <laughs> hands-on, you know, yeah. your training is. And so I feel like processes having that is great. We've talked about that a lot, but also like know what you can do for that person. So don't like hamstring them almost like yeah. they're coming into a new job. And so they need to be trained well and they need your undivided attention. And that's really hard when you have a lot of other things going on. Yeah. And a lot of people talking yeah. to you. Yeah. Yeah. The biggest thing for me is like, one thing I've learned is what time you tell them to come in. Yes. Um, because the theory is, you know, always come in at 8, but then it's like you're scrambling around. <laughs> you're like, God, i got to get it there at 630, yeah. like, to prepare everything. So, you know, really manage your time on that. Um, I was trying to th go off of what you said, but I don't remember what I was going to say. So Well, and I think you had mentioned it, too, when you wear many hats. Like, it's, it's hard to just – prioritize not really even prioritize but just to dedicate so much time to your training like your new person and going over all the things that they might need to be to know or be trained on and the mm -hmm. way that really deciding what the way the right way is because a lot of times you know people have just been doing the same thing over and over and over. And so mm -hmm. when you hire, especially for a new position or a specific position, now this person is going to be doing one specific thing then you want it to be done right. So you're, so then you're like re going over how the process is in your yeah. own head and how it's been done and what you want to change to make it better. Cause this person, it's like a clean slate, right? So yeah. like this person doesn't know how everything was done previously. So yeah. you have the opportunity to, to easily like show them the right way. Yeah. And I, I think one problem you probably run into is, so you're training this new person, but then you have the old people and they're not really following the process or they mm -hmm. are, but they're tweaking it to what they want. And then they're kind of like leading the new person astray. And you're yeah. like, don't do it that way. Just <laughs> follow the instructions. Yes. And then everyone's like, no, this, no, this. And I think that can be very confusing for new training. And I really haven't found a resolve for that yet except everyone just listen to one person but yeah. then that person becomes bombarded so yeah but you know as you're sitting here talking about I'm kind of getting clarity on it just from hearing it out loud is to really just to let everybody else on the team know hey this person's coming in I'm going to be training them you may hear some things that are different than what we've always done them but there's a reason for this so don't like change what I'm saying whenever yeah. I'm not present so getting out in front of I think your team because they've always done a good job of helping where it needs to be help, uh -huh. right? But when you are training for a specific way, you have to let them know that, yep. you know? Yep. And it's real cold here in Texas yes. right now. So and we're all Silas is up. looking real fluffy over there. <laughs> so it's kind of funny because he's kind of like. And he's like <laughs> trying to chatter. <laughs> yeah. He's talking to y'all on yeah. the podcast. But, yeah, I, I think that's a good point. Get in front of the team and say, and even make them, like, circle back and, you know, follow the process that we're yeah. putting in place because they're put in place for a reason. Yeah. Um, and to make it not as much as a cluster, you know. So, yeah, and going back to wearing a lot of hats, sometimes when I train people, I feel like I kind of give information overload. Um, for me, I like context when people talk to me and teach me new things. I like to know how it happens, where it happens, all the different intricate details. But I know for other people, I just sometimes feel like I'm talking and it's <laughs> like going through one ear and out the other, especially if it's not like something they're reoccurring and doing all the time. You know, I was just training on finances and 
it's only done once a month, the system, I was like, well, you're not going to remember any of this, but this is my turn to show you. And next time you get to try, you know, and you can struggle through it. But, you know, I think struggling through it's kind of always been our go-to. Yeah. And it is good to remember that when you are training, you are given information overload. So it really is handy to have written processes Mm -hmm. that can go. We always go back to that lately, but it's just so important because you're going to give them all this information that for years you've known what Mm -hmm. to do and how you want to do it. Now you're training somebody to do it. So you're giving them everything that's in your think tank. Right. Mm -hmm. And so they're probably retaining about 10% of that. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, there's this thing. Yes. And then there's this thing. Yes. Um, and all the things you're like, oh, man, now I need to add that to my process. And so I could see how that's really overwhelming for a new person. Yeah. So. And it's overwhelming for people training, especially if you have different people coming in, mm-hmm. different departments, not different people, because um, it's totally different topics, totally different mm-hmm. processes. And so just really know what your uh, – capacity is on that and and schedule it out that way yeah I also think you know determining is someone a hands-on learner or are they like do they just want to hear it first or see you do it for me I'm like okay I'll go in and figure it out Mm -hmm. but I know other people want to watch you do it and then they want to try it and so also figuring out who you've just hired and what's their best workability so maybe have that conversation before you get started and say do you want me to go fast do you want me to go slow what do you prefer (laughs) yeah that's a great point because usually I'm just nodding to nothing like this is how you do this and this and this and this and this and now you know so um (laughs) we're gonna move on and so I I think that'd be a good thing to do yeah for sure yep that's all I had, yeah. really. It was a short one today. Yep, me as well. Um, well, we'll be at the NATDA show in Nashville in Sept- uh, October. Oh, sorry, August. Yes, in August. So be sure to come see us there. Um, some big things happening and sneak peeks coming soon in yes. case um, when we get permission to tell it. So um, <laughs> Stay tuned for that. Yeah, stay tuned for that. And just be sure to like, follow us, subscribe everywhere you watch your podcast. And don't forget to follow Juan at Full Sin, doing his podcast, too, weekly. Nice. All right. Well, that's all we have for you at Women in the Trailer Industry. We'll see you next time. Bye.